All right, so this video is going to be on uh, changing on EGR valve on a 6.0 liter diesel, uh, Ford Power Stroke, 03 and a quarter to 07 model years. It's a very common failure, more so it's sticking than the actual sensor or motor failing on it. So you can take them out and clean them. Ford had us doing that for a while. They, there was a high failure rate with that for whatever reason, so they gave up on it. I'd say it's worth a try as long as you do it right. And, you know, spray away from the actual motor part and just spray the valve with carb cleaner, a foaming carb cleaner. The EGR valve can cause lots of different issues. Um, if it gets stuck open, you're going to have a poor running engine very poor and tons of black smoke. I mean, you'd go down the road at 20 miles an hour, it's gonna be bogging, and it would be black train rolling smoke. Um, usually, they get stuck partially open, and you get the P1335 minimum stop performance code. They're just not seating all the way at that one volt range where it thinks it, where it's learned to be fully seated and it'll throw a light for that and it may affect the, the turbo operation because it, as far as what the PCM will command it to do because the valve being open or closed at the wrong time will cause um, issues with the the turbo because it's relying on the back pressure being there and if you're losing it all through the EGR and you're just dumping it, and that's inert gases into the intake. It's it's if you if you're dumping it into the intake, first of all, you can get a more powerful mixture, and also the the loss of the back pressure to push that um, the turbine side of the turbo. It, it's it's going to affect it whether the light on, whether PCM limiting the turbos, VGT, or anything, it's going to um, really affect your performance, especially if it sticks open. If, if it was closed, um, it, it may throw a light, but it won't affect anything as far as performance. It'll affect emissions only, which you may or may not be uh, uh, against or for. Um, this one has no dryability, has just the code, the P1335, minimum stop performance. So I'm going to change it out, and I'm going to show you how to do it at home uh, without any special tools or going to a shop or going to the dealership. Um, and also, it's a good idea if you're not hard on it at times to clear the carbon out to, to go in there and, and change and uh, clean it with your carb cleaner so it doesn't get too caked up in there and I'll show you how to do that um, as far as the ports go. Ford does sell a seal and gasket kit for it so when you're done cleaning you can change all that out and uh, be like new. Um, that's about it. Let's get on it. Okay, it's time to change that EGR valve. Uh, it's very easy to get to. It's in the center of the engine, front. Here's your intake elbow fuel filter, oil filter, turbo of course. Right there is the EGR valve. First thing you gotta do is take off the connector, put it behind like that, it's out of your way. I'm gonna show you guys a very easy way of doing this without the special puller that they call off for in the manuals. And uh, to do it right. All right, all you gotta do is take out two screws, bolts, whatever. There's one, don't lose them. And there's one right here. All right, now what you're gonna need is two pry bars of sorts, like this, one long and thicker and it uh, doesn't flex as easy. 
and then a, a smaller one of sorts. I got these from Craftsman, they're just fine. 19 bucks, set of three. Something like this. You'll see why. Alright, we've got the dueling lights going now. Okay, so our bolts are out. The valve's still in there. And this is the hard part, is why they want you to use a special puller tool. What you're going to do is take the small thin one, put it on the flange of that uh, the ear coming off of it, and then you're going to pry against it until it turns. Like that. Alright, so this is how you're going to have it. The ears of the EGR valve me like that. Your small pry bar over here, it's got a, a pry point right there uh, to pivot on, and then the tip is under the ear. And the big one, since you're going to need uh, it's a little thicker and bigger to uh, pry off, you're kind of just helping on the side, you're prying up on the side, the other side the small bar, and this side you're just helping it up evenly. Um, I'm going to try to do this with the camera like this. Let's see, you can go like this. Put pressure on this side. My armpit. <laughs> and this one's going to do all the prying. So you go like this. Keep that pressure on both sides. And it'll pop like that. Once it's popped, it may be harder than that. Um, depends on the amount of carbon, how dry up, dried and hardened the uh, O-rings are. But once it's popped like that, as you can see, I basically did that one-handed. You can uh, just take it right out then. See, this one is not so bad, carbon-wise. So it came out a little easier. that's all there is to pulling it out once you know that way of doing it, um, it makes it a lot easier to change one of these out on your own for cleaning or replacement alright what you're going to want to do um, after that valves out is take something like where's it at whoa a cat claw like this sell them at Home Depot Husky brand some of the angle tip on there, uh, a pick, a larger pick that can get in there to these different chambers and you're going to want to get in there and you're not going to ruin anything by getting in there hard like this and you're going to want to get all the excessive carbon out, you won't get all of it out you want to get the built up stuff out of there and uh, on the bottom, straight down the bottom there, you might get like a dome pile of carbon also. Break that up. You want to stick a, it down straight in there. Break all that up. Get the chambers. Something like that. Just want to get in there at each level and then go at an angle down in here also and just break up all the uh, the clumps and the big stuff and then take a shop vac, stick it on there, and suck out all the loose stuff. Go in with your screwdriver again, break up this some more, and then uh, suck it out. And then take a rag in your finger, like an index finger, and get down with, with brake clean on it, soaked, and wipe up the uh, the ridges right here. Where the O-ring sits. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wipe the ridges right here, the blue blue ridges from the uh, o-rings that's where it's going to seal up each chamber so you're going to want those cleaned of carbon and then clean the top here too 
Okay, now that's all clean, it's time for the uh, new or cleaned EGR valve. I'm putting a new one in this particular vehicle. Uh, make sure this gasket's on there. That's for the heat, for the gases. And then make sure it has both O-rings, obviously. And get them a little bit of uh, grease on there, uh, engine oil, whatever. Not too much, not too little. And that'll help ease it in there. Okay, so it'll fall into place. And after that, it'd be down that far. Now it's time to put the bolts in. Uh, the manual calls off for a special uh, press-in tool. All you got to do for this is put each bolt in and tighten them evenly side to side. With that grease on the O-rings, it'll seat in there perfectly. And you won't bend the ears, you won't deform the gas, the uh, housing, anything else. It works just fine, I've done it hundreds of times. Here's a tip for uh, getting them down in there or any tight spaces. Use a, uh, this is trans gel, basically petroleum jelly. Put a little bit in the bolt head, and then by suction, it'll it'll stay in there in your socket there in case you don't have man magnetic uh, bits and then you can go down in and these since the ear may not be perfectly um, aligned um, you want to do them by hand at first especially this back one by hand. I like to use hand tools to put it back in so that you go so it's even also instead of using like a little mini impact driver like that or bit driver. Okay, see, so give a little tighten to this side, give a little tighten to this side, a little bit, and then get back to this side. And you can see without any effort or bending of the ears or anything they've worn about, it's going in straight. No nicks or cuts to the O-rings, nothing. And after that, make sure you plug her back in. It's fully seated. Besides that, if you don't have access to a scan tool, disconnect both batteries. That side, that side, of course. Uh, I'd say 10 minutes, and then I'll reset the uh, EGR stop values. Uh, for minimum stop performance and reset your code obviously too.